today I'm going to tell you a story about a zoologist that went to visit a farm. You know what a zoo zoologist is? Good, good. It's a person that likes to study animals. Sometimes they call them naturalists. But anyway, this zoologist was visiting this farm and he was looking around at the animals at the farm. And he looked over and he saw chickens in the chicken coop. But what really surprised him was when he saw that there was a full-grown eagle in the chicken coop. He said, what in the world is that eagle doing in the chicken coop? Well, he said, the farmer said, well, there was this really bad storm one day, and I found this egg laying out by itself. So I took it and I put it in the chicken coop. And you know, one of those chickens took and adopted it and sat on it and hatched it. Took care of it, raised it. So, there he sits. Well, the naturalist said, well, doesn't he ever try to fly out of there? And the farmer says, no, I don't think he knows that he, what it means to fly. He says, well, how could that be? Well, the naturalist thought, well, you know, baby eagles usually are about 10 weeks old when they have enough feathers and strength to learn how to fly. And then the mother and father eagle will flutter over the nest to show them what they're supposed to do. But of course, this eagle only had a chicken to show them what to do. So here he was just strutting and pecking on the ground, never even looking up. Well, the zoologist says, well, do you mind if I take that eagle with me and try some experiments? Farmer said, sure, all he's doing is eating food here. Go ahead, take it. So, the guy took the eagle, took him out, and he put him on top of a fence post. The eagle just sat there. So he pushed him off. He said, fly! Poor eagle, he was so shocked that he just fell to the ground. And then he got up and he just started strutting around and pecking again. Well, the zoologist says, well, I'm going to take him over here to this farm. And I went into the barn and he climbed up onto the hayloft. And he went over to where the door was on the back of the barn. So he takes the bird and he throws him out of the door. <sighs> that poor eagle, he was just totally tricked and he just tumbled to the ground and picked himself up and started strutting around and pecking again. So anyway, so he finally says, well, takes the eagle, takes him and he drives to the highest spot in the county. And then after a long, sweaty walk, he got to the top. Eagle's under his arm, and he's saying, look, that fella, he says, I know that if you fall from this distance, and you don't fly, you're going to get hurt. But you know, I think it's better that you die right here on the rocks than to live your life acting like a chicken. That's not what you are. So with that, the eagle's there under his arm, and he's looking around, and way off in the distance, he sees another eagle. Now, eagles have very good eyesight. In fact, if you took this and took it out a mile away, a whole mile, took it out a whole mile, that eagle could read that. Ooh, 
pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, I have a little trouble reading the, the signs on the street signs, you know. What is that? You know, but not the eagle. They've got really good eyes back. So anyway, this eagle looks over and he sees another eagle soaring. So with that, the man takes the eagle and he gives it a mighty shove up into the air. And he says, fly, fly, fly. And the eagle, having seen the other eagle, it awakens something in him. And he suddenly stretches out his six-foot wings and he starts flapping them. And he flapped them some more and he circled around and went. And then finally he soared up higher and higher and off into the, the, the uh, sunset. Pretty amazing. So, what we see here is an example. You see, the zoologist had removed the eagle from its surroundings there in the barnyard. He'd take them somewhere else. And then, he saw an example, something to emulate. And because of that, the eagle was able to do all that he was meant to do. You know, if you take a pig and you wash him up, get out the mud and dirt off him, you wash him up, and then you let him go back to the pig pen, and what happens? Dirty again. That's right, it gets dirty again. But you know what? If you take a pig and you wash him up, you know why they like to get dirty? No, 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 no. I'm really, they're really very clean animals. Do you know why they like to, to wallow in the mud? It does. It protects their skin, it protects them from. Uh, insects that would bother them and keep them cool. And besides, they, they just love to do it. But anyway, if you take that pig home and you wash him up and don't let him go back to the pig pen, he'll stay clean. In fact, some people have actually taken little pigs and raised them in their house and taught them like dogs. And they stayed clean, right? But Here's another thing. As new Christians, you have to do like a 180 degree turn. You gotta get out of there. And you gotta look at a God-given model. Who do you think that God-given model is? Anybody? Jesus. Jesus, right. He's our God-given model. So we should reflect the character of Jesus and so that other people will see Jesus in us. And then we're all that God meant for us to be. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, Help us study and learn to be more like you. And in doing that, help us to be a shining example of Jesus. Help us to be what you wish us to be. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.